Now, amidst the rising number of cases and the refusal of some persons who test positive for COVID-19 to go to isolation centers, many states have said they will continue to treat the infected patients at isolation centers rather than resort to home treatment option. They noted that getting persons who had tested positive for the virus to the isolation centers remained one of the strategies to contain the spread of the deadly virus. In Kwara State, the Chief Press Secretary to Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak and spokesperson for the COVID-19 Technical Committee, Rafiu Ajakai, said the state government was not thinking of treating patients at home as it has sufficient bed spaces in its isolation centers. Similar position was taken by the Kasina State Commissioner for Information and Chairman of the COVID-19 Enlightenment Committee. Also in Ondo State, the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Wahab Adegbenro, said the state had enough facilities to accommodate all its confirmed cases. And joining us to discuss the issue of home isolation uh, for the management of COVID-19 patients is Public Affairs Analyst Alester Wilcox. Good evening, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, now, based on available information and just being a Nigerian, what's your assessment of the serious consideration being given to home isolation by the authorities? Uh, well, when I had that news, I, I was taken aback. I did not understand why any serious um, government would be talking about home isolation when you are not able to properly manage the central isolation. Uh, the, the COVID-19 cases are dispersed in various areas. Uh, the, the homes are, uh, I mean, are quite dispersed from the others. And the only way that you can bring everyone together is to be in the central association center. Now, the association center does two things. It helps to ensure that those who are infected or confirmed infected do not infect others. And so they are kept apart. So if you keep them in their homes, what is the guarantee that they're not going to uh, uh, infect other people? Again, and then what are the drugs available? That's also one issue that we don't understand. What are the drugs that are used to treat those infected? Are these really available? Who will, who will monitor? So it's for me, the logistics arrangement of saying you want to keep them at home for isolation is too, is too, is too large, and, it, and I don't think we have the capacity, any, any state has the capacity in this country to effectively uh, carry out such a such program. I don't think it's something that we should consider at all in this circumstance. Mm. Well, in, in talking about logistics, what would be some of the specific challenges with implementing this move, which you can identify just, you know, hearing it? No, I've just said it. Logistics, how will, how, I mean, number one, we don't have enough medical personnel that will manage this, uh, the, the, the crisis, that, I mean, that managing the center. So if they are in a center, in one, if they are, they, the affected person are in one location, a single medical officer can easily do a ward run and attend to everyone almost at the same time. Then when, when, when they say you say they are at home, how many medical persons do you have that will go around to the houses? What of the cost of transportation to the houses? What of the, the I mean, the, the other uh, protocols, the PPEs that are supposed to be, to be taken to those houses? What of the conditions in those houses that you want to go? How dispersed are the houses from each other? So these are the issues. These are the big logistical issue that you cannot, uh, I mean, that, that nobody can handle. You don't have enough personnel. If you have to attend to, say, 100 people in different locations, in 100 locations, how many doctors do you have that can go around, doctors and nurses and other paramedicals that can go around? How many, and you have to do constant tests on, this, on these individuals to know how, I mean, how far they are faring. So what is the, well, I mean, where is the facility? So for me, it is nothing that, it, it is practically impossible. Let's not even try to rationalize it. It's practically impossible to have home isolations and home treatment for this person, except if you already know the treatments, you can give the people the protocol and give them the treatment protocol so that they can administer by themselves. But if you still, if the treatments and the drugs that are being used is still shared in secrecy that people do not know, then uh, it's, it, it, it is something that, that, that can never be, be achieved. Mm. In talking about treatment and drugs, there's a growing controversy, as you know, over the use of hydroxychloroquine in the treatment of COVID-19, you know, as against the advice of World Health Organization. What's your position on that? Well, I'm not a medical personnel, neither do I know the composition of chloroquine. Uh, uh, all I know chloroquine as uh, the chloroquine family is it's for malaria, uh, and that has to do with malaria. Uh, but if some persons have used it and it worked out, for instance, I understand Raymond Dokmesi 
was saying that what he was giving was chloroquine or something, and it works. Why not? Um, it's time for people, at this time, people should, must come up out with anything that is possible that can create some possibilities of uh, restoring life to the affected persons. We don't need to wait for WHO. WHO will always want to tell you clinical tests and we are in an emergency. And all those clinical tests and all the confirmations may not be able to take place within this period. So you do, you make do what you know you can make do with. We got uh, the, the, the Madagascar's, the Madagascar's uh, 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 syndrome and all, whatever thing it is. I mean, it's there. People have already proposed some solutions, some certain uh, 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 solutions that you can use. So these things should be used. You really think we shouldn't listen to, to the World Health? Health? Mr. Wilcox, you really think Nigeria should no, not listen to the World we Health? We shouldn't listen to the World Health Organization. But the medical experts should know what are the remedies. Now, there are come some things that could happen, and it's better for take a first aid. Will that stop the, 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 the multiplication of the virus in the body? Will it stop it? Does it have capacity to it? So these are the questions that the medical, health, medical people should answer. And it's a trial and error thing. Are you better off trying it with it and remain alive, or not using it and then have a fatality? So these are the delicate balances that, that, that should be done. Because right now, we do, that is, we've been told there is no drug for it. But we thank God that but we also know that lots and lots of people are recovering from it. So what was used for them? So anything that has been used for them that is working and, is, and they're recovering, let it be made public, let it be made known, let them continue using it. So we can't wait for health organizations to finish all the clinical tests that they want to do. Yeah, because, I mean, and then, and, then, and then have increased fatality in our hands. It's not, for me, the wise thing to do is to take that first step that you know can preserve life while waiting for an, a, a, a solution that is more permanent. All right, Mr. Wilcox, thank you for your contribution. Stay safe out there. It's always my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Have a nice day.